So today we've got a bit of a different video. I'm not going to be out in the shed actually making something or welding or anything like that. I'm going to be talking about my next project, which is going to be an electric Honda CBR125. I won't actually be 125cc equivalent. It'll be about maximum of 680cc equivalent, I do believe. That's absolute maximum peak power. And this here is just the motor that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using the 47kV version with liquid cooling. And the custom shaft is going to be milled to go straight onto the sprocket of the motorcycle. The front sprocket. And then the um, chain will just connect to that as usual. It'll have to be slightly extended. But aside from that, it's uh, not really any different. And the, the motor is reasonably small, here's the specifications of it, it weighs 11.3 kilos and it's pretty heavy, but, <coughs> pardon me, considering that it is a bunch of copper and magnets it's a reasonable weight. Um, this motor has a configuration of being delta wound which is very nice. So you get the extra power and it's continuous power is 15 kilowatts which is pretty nice actually and um, for the maximum torque it's at roughly 100 newton meters or just above 100 newton meters so that's quite good it's got a ridiculous amount of torque um, but yes, it's, it's quite a good motor really, I think, and I think for what I'm doing it'll be just perfect. And it has liquid cooling too, so it should be just about right. Now this is the motor and mounting plate. This is a, a little different to what you'd usually see. As it's got a shroud around the back of it because it's actually an outrunner motor and I don't like the idea of having a great big unprotected spinning thing about uh, maybe 15 centimeters, 20 centimeters from my legs. So I've had to put a shroud around the outside to protect it and also to protect myself rather, more to protect it from fragments like rocks and things hitting it. It's got an open section here which will probably be enclosed and there will be ventilation holes in the front of the plate and a big fan on the back even though it's liquid cooled just to make bloody well sure that it doesn't get too hot. Now this plate is obviously far too big to fit in the motorcycle so the motor mount plate will look something like this. It's a bit rough around the edges because I did go around and chamfer everything but it didn't save for some reason so i have to go and redo all of that. That's roughly what the motor mounting plate will look like. And the motor will be mounted in the centre of it somewhere. Um, but yes, this is the shaft of the motor. As the company does a custom shaft option, so they'll mill the motor output shaft to whatever specifications you give them. And it needs to look somewhat like this, which is to fit the sprocket of the motorcycle this is what that looks like it's got a sort of spline type interface on it so reasonably simple I just went and I cut that middle section out and copied it over to there and then made the opposite piece to it and then just stuck that on the end of the motor just for, to see how it looks and it looks all right ish i'm gonna have to put spaces in there maybe even a second bearing just to help with the axial load on it a little bit but i think it should be all right um sprocket needs to go about there ish rather than all the way down the bottom so i'll put spaces or have the shaft milled all the way up to there i need to measure that all out first so I need to still figure out where I need to mount the motor in the bike. Um, drill a hole in the centre of that plate somewhere. Mount the motor to it. And then I need to get this plate. I've made a cardboard version of this plate just for now that fits. So I know that this is correct. Um, 
I need to get this cut out of 10 to 15 millimeter thick aluminium sheets, which are very expensive annoyingly, but I know someone would cut them for free at least, so that's a start. But I think that's pretty much all I need to talk about. I'll stick in some images of the motorcycle and all the stuff I've done so far. Um, I've also stripped the motorcycle completely. Everything has been removed. Um, the only thing that's left on there at the moment, well, there's the frame, forks, coolant tank, and there's some covers on where the plastic parts were, but aside from that, there's not really any different to what it was except for that it has no engine. So what I need to do is replace the engine with this plate, which looks exactly like the engine mounting wise. And then I need to put the motor on the back of it so that it's inside the bike. Then I need to put that shroud around the outside. Put cooling holes in the front of the plate. Not too many because otherwise it'll be weakened. I'm thinking slots are the best. Holes make it weaker than slots. Um, these bits here, they are not actually covered. They're hollow. So they go all the way through the motor. Well, they're not hollow. It's just a, it's like a hole, basically. So it acts as sort of a fan to push air through the motor. But I don't, I don't really see the point of having extra air cooling if you've already got liquid cooling running through as you can see when I remove that cover on the outside you've got your two connections for liquid cooling there and there which are going to run off to the radiator from the bike and a little coolant pump that I'm going to stick somewhere that runs on 12 volts cables come out here they can be up to 4 gauge cable which is quite thick and this motor has got hall sensor, so it's a sensor. It's not a sensorless motor, in which case I wouldn't even think about buying it because you would not be able to get the stupid amount of starting torque which I require. So on my other e-bike, I couldn't. The starting torque was very low, so I couldn't really get any speed while I was stationary on a hill, for example, waiting at a light. I couldn't really get up the rest of the hill. But I think that's pretty much all I want to talk about for today.